So I let you the floor for traffic regulation and UVAS, which is a very important topic with the arrival of uh, autonomous driving and more and more linked services with uh, a link uh, among the systems in order that uh, vehicle uh, can understand which uh, regulation uh, has to be applied at the place where they are driving. Thank you, uh, Joseph. I'd like to the floor. Thank you very much, Jean-Philippe. Uh, yeah, I hope I can live up to that uh, challenge that you put on the table with this presentation. Let's see. Um, yeah, the interesting question, I mean, you, you, you pointed out some things already, but the interesting question is, so why would we want to deal with traffic regulations and ATEX2? I mean, that is, uh, we should always, before we start adding elements uh, to the standard, new content, we should uh, consider whether that's really relevant. Yeah. Um, obviously, uh, I think uh, that question has been answered positively. That is really important. We need to improve the information flow on traffic regulations. Uh, and that is, yeah, I put on the slide the dynamic driving tasks for a connected cooperative and automated mobility. Yes, the automated driving is asking for traffic regulations on a detailed level, uh, but I would not limited to that. I think that um, we do have uh, a lot of benefit from improved information about traffic regulations, even in our everyday normal ITS services we are using, like navigation. Yeah, if you at, the, at least in Germany, it's the only thing that I can say: if you leave the motorway, uh, you can still end up with your navigation system uh, uh, telling you you should uh, pass through a closed road. Yeah, so I think there is a lot of. Uh, um, benefit to be gained if we include this traffic regulation in a better way. Yeah? And But the problem is that that is not a simple topic. Yeah? The way that we receive the information nowadays as human drivers is via signs. But signs can be very confusing. They can be very, very complex and they are diverging a lot throughout Europe. Yeah? And uh, therefore, I think uh, we have to be, uh, some people say we don't need this information because we have uh, cameras and we have uh, picture processing, artificial intelligence and so on. Uh, honestly speaking, I don't think that that is a good interface. Yeah, I mean, uh, the traffic, the road authorities that create these traffic regulations nowadays use systems and the driving tasks, the vehicles or the um, assistance systems that support human drivers are also systems. And uh, so if you create the data digitally, uh, then I think there should be a better interface to get it into another digital system than to paint it on, on a sign or to, to display a sign on a screen. So I think what we need is a machine interpretable uh, digital representation. Yeah? And then there is still another question that's always raised in this discussion saying, but should data do it? Shouldn't it be done somewhere else? Isn't it sufficient if we do it in TNITS or other standards? Yeah? Um, and then I think, okay, uh, this starts, this automatically leads into the discussion, is it dynamic or more static data? Is it data that should just be provided in a digital map? Well, we have to note that some regulations are temporary and some, so they are dynamic if you want. Some signs are just temporarily put there for an hour or two. Uh, but some signs, especially when the signs are displayed on the VMS, uh, are even activated automatically and are very dynamic. Yeah? So I think in terms of the, the scope that we typically have for data X2 um, uh, traffic information, I think that truly fits. Yeah? Uh, is that a new topic now? So we start on the green field. No, we do not. Yeah, Traffic regulations have actually been always part, been part of DATEX somehow. Yeah, And uh, there was a lot of discussion about the history of DATEX earlier. Yeah, if, I if you allow me to take you back to the last century, then uh, you would have seen, as DATEX would have seen something like this. Yeah? That's one of the oldest uh, uh, DATEX content elements. It, uh, in the 1990s, it was called uh, the Traveler Information uh, uh, Message, the Travin, and uh, it would have looked like this, yeah, for those who've never seen that before. Um, 
that has actually then uh, been continued uh, in the new era, the Datex2 era, as uh, what is called situation publication. It has become a European norm. Meanwhile, SEN EN 1657 3, nowadays it looks like this, for example, that is the XML. Uh, representation. There's also JSON or ASN1-based uh, options available. Uh, this model does contain uh, traffic regulation content to a certain extent, like mandatory speed limits or things like that, even since the early 1990s. Yeah? But in this model, the traffic regulation content is mixed up with a lot of other parts, uh, like uh, environmental information about road weather, other operator actions like salting and gritting and things like that. Yeah? It was intended to be a broad model for informing human travelers. And it was definitely good and successful <laughs> on that, in that domain. But uh, I don't think that it is sufficient for the machine to machine uh, um, information flow that we are aiming at now for traffic regulations. Yeah? And therefore we started a new content stream to create a new Datex model, uh, Datex model de de uh, dedicated to traffic regulations. Yeah, And the new approach, um, and I will just sketch this here, and then uh, we'll spend a bit more time on showing you an example rather than doing a deep dive into this model, because it, as, <laughs> as so often, once you start doing it, it is a very deep model. and it, I don't think that this, uh, we have the time here to go into details. Yeah? But just roughly to give you a view on how the structure is, it is defining a, a, a payload publication, a new type of payload publication as all other parts of Datex2. It's not surprisingly called the traffic regulation publication. And if you look at this top level diagram, then you see that it actually gives you the opportunity to fill information into uh, any of four different types of containers, I would call them. Yeah? And the first one is called traffic regulations from competent authorities. And that is the container that describes the, uh, the bulk of traffic regulation uh, information. That is actually the process that leads to signs being placed on the street. Yeah? Then you have uh, uh, other mechanisms, for example, you have sometimes uh, a situation where the competent authority uh, enables uh, another actor to put certain types of regulation in place when needed. For example, if you have a large uh, a building site, uh, then you um, you um, probably uh, the the competent authority allows the a contractor of that building site to close a lane or something whenever that is needed for the work on the building site. Yeah, um, we also have um, the sometimes ad hoc regulations. So certain actors, like in particular road operators, are allowed to do certain regulations without this uh, permission process. Uh, in particular, when it is safety related, uh, a reaction is needed in the, for example, if a very dangerous pothole is reported, then the traffic, the road operator will go out immediately and he has a uh, general permission to put some regulations in place to secure the action to fix uh, this problem. And the last one is uh, where the traffic regulation order actually enables a system to switch on traffic regulation. That is what you do in traffic management systems where you have VMS switching on overtaking bands or speed limits or things like that based on the general permission that under certain conditions, the software will automatically uh, uh, enable uh, the regulation. Uh, uh, I will go one level deeper and then I will leave it for this presentation and uh, I will, uh, if, you, if you're interested in this, the model will be published, I hope very soon, I hope maybe in June, and then you have enough, uh, or a lot of time to look into this, yeah. Um, uh, for this, let's say next step of uh, the level of detail, I take the traffic regulations from competent authorities uh, a container. What you find in there is called the traffic regulation order. We have a lot of discussions about the namings, whether the classes all have the accurate name, whether the names are understandable in each uh, uh, European country, that this is still work in progress, I would assume. 
Uh, what, we what we talk about here is that the competent authority issues a traffic regulation, which is uh, done by an order. Typically at the end of the process, it's still a paper with a stamp and a, a signature. Um, this traffic regulation order in itself may address various traffic regulations, yeah? uh, but it may have by itself some kind of specification about the location that is affected and about the the period of time that is affected. So it has by itself a, a, a location reference. So we are using obviously the Datex2 location referencing system from part two. Um, and we are using the time validity, the well-known time validity uh, model from uh, part seven yeah, for this purpose. But then the main content of the traffic regulation of very obviously is uh, of the traffic regulation order is a set of traffic regulations, yeah, which you see at the bottom of the screen. And if you look at uh, this, what, how do you describe that? Then you have two aspects. One is the actual, uh, um, the um, type of regulation. Yeah? So what thing is concretely regulated? Maybe you have a speed limit, you have an overtaking ban, you have a closure, you have some other things. Yeah? Um, so you need, uh, uh, every regulation can actually be implemented by different types of regulation. And uh, therefore you have a multiplicity of that allows multiple regulations. But the second thing is in a lot of cases, these traffic regulations are actually uh, subject to conditions. Yeah? So for example, you have an overtaking ban, but only for, RG, for HGVs. Yeah? So what we have to express in the model is conditions. And there, there was a, um, a process in the evolution of the model. We started with a little bit of simpler models uh, for this aspect of modeling conditions. And actually my example is still using the old model, but meanwhile, uh, in the last comment resolution of this uh, standard, um, we have agreed to uh, that we need a full-fledged condition modeling submodel. And th what you see on the left is a model that actually allows you to express um, complex expressions, logical expressions of conditions. So you can describe that uh, condition A and condition B, but not condition C uh, have to be valid uh, for this, uh, um, for, for the certain regulation. Yeah. Um, the model is actually copied from uh, the TNITS standard and uh, we are in, in constant, uh, let's say, discussion with TNITS people to make the, the way that we model traffic regulations in this DATEX2 standard structurally very similar to how it is going to happen in TNITS. Yeah. And uh, so I think that is uh, one of those aspects that uh, Jean-Philippe mentioned uh, earlier of trying to get all the relevant uh, um, standards of the different ecosystems aligned on a semantic level. Yeah. Okay, so I will stop here. Obviously, you know what, ha what would happen if I would click on one of those classes. You, we would show, we see a huge models with uh, types of regulations and different conditions or vehicle conditions, driver conditions, uh, uh, drive conditions, conditions for the trip, all this type of thing. Uh, it's, it's a substantial model. And I think it will grow in the next iterations anyway, because we have um, in the Datex PSA, we have produced it uh, with a very, um, let's say substantial um, mapping against the street codes of Germany, Spain, and the United Kingdom. But I assume in the, as soon as this is published in the next years, you will uh, get uh, feedback from other member states that will try to map their street code against this model and will find gaps and uh, issue uh, change requests. So it's going to be, a, it is a substantial model. I will not go into the model. What I will do is I show you an example because I think that makes it a bit more, let's say, gives you a grasp on, on how it will look like. Yeah. And I've used, um, as an example, I've used a, 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 a long-term roadworks on a motorway. Yeah? That is a very typical uh, situation where a traffic regulation order is issued that contains a lot of single 
element traffic regulations. So if you look at this diagram, you see speed, various different speed limits, you see overtaking bands, you see uh, alternate um, layouts of lanes, you see lanes merged, you see lanes with limited width. Uh, so a quite a substantial set of uh, individual traffic regulations that are uh, actually valid in different places. Yeah? And therefore, uh, I'll show you a little bit how uh, the a message to convey this uh, situation uh, would look like in, in the new standard. Um, so what I do is I will dim the picture. Yeah, I hope you can still see it. And the first thing is I will create a little uh, location referencing uh, domain for myself, which is uh, probably in a specific type of coordinates just being invented for this webinar. So we have uh, eight uh, coordinates in uh, uh, direction X, and we have three uh, coordinates in direction Y. And that will allow us to describe the exact location uh, of the uh, conditions, but also of the traffic regulations in a coordinate way. Yeah? So in general, we would have a traffic regulation order for the whole thing. Yeah? So uh, the traffic regulation order would give you the time validity when this is a long-term roadworks, it would be there for months potentially, but it would also give you uh, maybe a, a ge geographical look, uh, description of the overall location. So I've just created a, a closed polygon uh, with my newly invented coordinate system uh, for this purpose. Now it could be some other thing as well, yeah. That would be the traffic regulation order. And this traffic regulation order would contain quite a few individual concrete traffic regulations. Let's start with the lanes, the yellow lines. Be aware that lines are also, uh, markings are also uh, signs. So the yellow markings are traffic signs and they have a regulatory uh, um, uh, meaning. And uh, this, in this case, it would be a, a regulation of type alternate road or carriageway or lane layout. And you see the green, uh, the, uh, the the full line is actually describing the uh, the lane that is uh, as it was originally, and the dotted green line is the new layout of the lane. And then you can see, if you look into the coordinates provided there, you can see how it describes um, the uses uh, polygons to describe the uh, the uh, original lane uh, and it as um, applicability criteria and the new layout as the regulation. Yeah? It also gives you some additional uh, attributes. It says uh, gives you yellow markings is true. So this is uh, implemented by yellow markings. And in this particular case, the lane is deviated to the hard shoulder. So um, you would uh, uh, have the deviation to hard shoulder being set to true as well. Yeah? Now, if we go on, uh, the next one is the blue one up there. It's a similar thing. You have the original lane as an applicability criteria, and you have uh, the, uh, the dotted blue line as the new uh, lane layout. Yeah, Yellow markings is also true. Deviation to harsh order is not true because that lane is still on the main carriageway. And, um, but you also have an additional um, um, applicability criteria here, which is the vehicle width. So you're only allowed to use this lane if the vehicle width is less than two meters. Yeah? It's a narrow lane. And a very similar um, uh, pattern is uh, for the third lane, where the interesting uh, aspect is in that case that it is merged to another lane. So we have a merged to other lane indicator being set to two. So the red dotted line is actually uh, going together with the blue line for a section of uh, the road. Um, and uh, now the interesting thing is uh, how the way we structure this here um, is we go uh, step by step for each ind individual um, traffic regulation. In the next presentation after the break that Fabrizio Paoletti is doing, you will see that we have actually found uh, or are working on another way to, to, to model it in another way. And there we create the sections that you see here, more or less indicated by my uh, demo coordinate system. And then we apply the regulations to the sections. So we turn uh, this order a little bit, but uh, it will be interesting for you maybe to compare that. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, we are not ready. Yeah? We still have the uh, speed limits regulations, and these are two different ones. So I have two regulations with uh, different uh, um, uh, locations. Uh, I've located the, uh, the locations in the middle of uh, the um, carriageway, and uh, we have an indicator that says it is an, uh, uh, applicable to a carriageway. Um, how that will continue in the future towards automation in terms of how we have to specify uh, these locations exactly is to be seen. I mean, that is something where at the moment we are just, we don't know exactly how it will uh, look like. And the last one uh, is uh, the one that uh, describes the location for the overtaking ban with uh, conditions for the vehicle types, heavy goods vehicles, buses, and cars with trailers. So that is uh, how this uh, will look like. What I've done is I've shown you the message, uh, but I folded a lot of the uh, elements to be able to show it on one slide. What you get is a, 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 a section, um, uh, initially a section with which contains the a general information about the traffic regulation order. Yeah, and then you see um, the three separate sections uh, describing the alternate lane layout, if you want the yellow markings. Then you have two separate sections describing the two separate speed limits, the different speed limits with the different values of 180 kilometers per hour. And the last is uh, the traffic regulation that governs the HGV overtaking ban. Yeah. And if you take this, to, so we have, from the model, we have created a schema using the tool, the tool that uh, uh, Bart uh, pointed to in his earlier presentation, and then uh, we have created uh, this example uh, uh, as a valid instance uh, of this schema. Yeah. And um, if you load it into a, an XML tool and you have, uh, and, and, uh, have the code beautifier, uh, depicting it in the usual way, then you will get uh, a bit less than 200 lines of XML. I'm saying 200 lines of XML is a strange word because XML has no lines, but the code beautifier shows it to you in a typical way. And in this typical way, it is less than 200 lines, which is really compact for such a complex set of information. Yeah? So I think that is a very, uh, let's say interesting um, point and we are, as I, as, as I said, we will see later on in the presentation about dynamic lane management that will be addressing exactly more, but also this situation. We are trying to even improve this further uh, by um, creating a model that allows an even more condensed uh, information, but I think it's really quite good. So if you go through the model, um, you will not see any redundant information or any unnecessary structure. Uh, and that is, I think, what we tried to um, achieve uh, with the modeling uh, approach. Okay, now let me give you a little bit of status where we stand in terms of the standardization of the model. It has been created inside the Datex2 PSA, um, but we also launched a work item already, a preliminary work item already at SEM. Uh, this is a bit like showing how the relationship between the uh, actual working groups uh, in the Datex organization and uh, at least the cooperation with SEN works at the moment. Uh, so when we had the first draft available in the PSA, we created a preliminary work item. And in the scope of this preliminary work item, we had a first review last year. Yeah. And uh, then uh, based uh, on, on the, um, the comments we've received from uh, this review. We did a comment resolution and created a, a second uh, draft. And uh, with this second draft, we actually uh, act, asked for work item activation. So that was turning the preliminary work item into a work item that is running now. It was very positively voted. I must say we had 15, um, send members not only voting positively but uh, uh, naming experts to contribute to the work and um, so it, i think there is a lot of interest in this model that's what, what i wanted to say yeah? um, and that uh, together with that uh, 
work item activation, we had a second review that was just run in the first month of this year. Um, and uh, we have, I think two weeks ago, we had a comment resolution uh, meeting uh, for this, um, uh, the feedback from this review. And uh, we are now working on the final draft that we will uh, hopefully, I assume in May, uh, then put forward for final for final vote in sense. So I, I do hope that we have a vote for this TS. Obviously it will be um, somehow running before the end of the PSA in June at latest. Yeah? And then I guess as soon as we have a positive vote, we will publish the model on datex2.eu because then we know that it, it will still take a while until the standard is actually available, be officially published by SEN, but it will, if it is endorsed, uh, it will not change technically anymore. And then we can publish the model and make it available to you on datex.2.eu, uh, yeah. That was for traffic regulations in general. So that is for every, every case where a regulator of the road, um, puts a traffic regulation in place. Yeah? And it was uh, modeled very, uh, let's say, tightly to the traffic regulation order. Meanwhile, a second relevant activity has been started by the European Commission. The European Commission has contacted a project uh, that is supposed to work on the Datex2 model for urban vehicle access regulations. Yeah? And uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, project has now started under the name UVA Box. UVA stands for Urban Vehicle Access Regulations. If you, um, it has a website, so if you want to get some information about this project, uh, I would uh, uh, guide you to uvarbox.eu. Um, and this uh, model now is actually taking this traffic regulation package that we have produced in the PSA as a starting point but it then extends uh, this model uh, with uh, using the um, relatively powerful mechanism of Datex to, to do extensions and specializations of a model that allows to add additional stuff to it. And the, the name of that package is Control Zones. It was actually started before the request of the commission to have a UVA model based on a modeling that has happened in Socrates 2.0. Yeah? And it is um, what it is doing, it is taking the traffic regulation things, which are, let's say, a, a huge part of what you want to know about uh, uh, UVAR, but it adds those things which go on top. Uh, in the case of UVARs, you often have uh, additional regulations that are not part of the traffic regulation order, but part of other orders or they are part of uh, the legal basis uh, or the street code or other legal basis in a particular country. So there is a, a wider set of information to be um, provided. And this modeling is just uh, going on. Uh, it has just started if you want to, to say it that way. Uh, but the intention is uh, uh, for this UVA model uh, to also be fed into a new SEN standard in the 16157 series. So I assume if the progress in the project is running well, I assume somehow in the second half of this year, uh, there will be a work item, I, I don't know, work item or preliminary work item proposal being uh, put forward to SEN for a new part of the 16157 series to cover this urban vehicle access regulations. Yeah, And if, if you're interested in, in this, uh, topic in particular, and uh, if you should be uh, planning to attend the Transport Research Arena next year in Lisbon, uh, knock on woods that we can do regular events again next year, uh, then um, you, you should make a, a remark in your notebook because uh, the project is planning to do a hackathon uh, for this model uh, during the TRA or besides the TRA in Lisbon. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be my presentation, John Philip. Thank you very much.